One of the best ways to lock in profit and prevent a winning trade from turning into a loser is by trailing your stop. This video will go over all the options the predator offers to trail your stop. These trail stops will work on any initial order entered within the predator. It doesn't matter if you're using one of the predator's built-in auto entry functions or if you're using one of the manual entry options like the buy high and sell low features. All your orders within the predator are managed by the same 04 order management section. Now I have another video that dives a whole lot deeper on how to set up your orders within the predator. But in this video, we're going to focus mainly on just the trail stops. Now, all of these trail stops will set up in a fairly similar manner. You go down to your order management section, select the trail stop that you want. So let's just select high low. And then you're going to select the target distance in which it triggers. So for example, here we have a tick distance of 20. That means once we enter the trade after 20 ticks into profit, it's going to trigger our trail stop. So if we change this to 60, let's say we enter here. Once we are 60 ticks into profit, our trail stop is going to start. And you can also change how you want to calculate when your trail stop starts. You can go by either ticks, your RR distance, that's your risk to reward. So it just takes the difference between your entry price and your stop price and multiplies it by that amount. And when it reaches that target, it starts trailing. And also an ATR distance just takes the most current ATR multiplied by whatever number you want. Again, that's when it triggers your trail stop. All of your trail stop methods will be triggered in this exact same way. Now, the second thing to note is you can have multiple different trail stops for your different targets. So let's say for example, I'm going to change this to have no profit just so we can see it better and an order quantity of five. This is going to be our first profit target. I'm going to set up a tight trail stop just so we can secure as much profit as quick as possible. So I'm going to have this set up so it triggers immediately. I want it to start trailing right away. So once I'm one tick into profit, my trail stop will start. Now let's say we want to set up a second profit target and maybe set our trail stop a little farther away just to try and lock in those runner profits in case they happen. So let's set up target number two. And again, I'm going to remove the profit target from this one just so we can see it a little better. And I'm also going to set up a different trail stop. This time I'm using a super trend. And this one will have a trigger after one tick distance as well. And that should hopefully be okay. I'm just going to apply and load this on the chart. All right, so I'm just going to hit play and I'm going to enter long manually. So we can already see we had our stop set at the bottom of the candle. We were already one tick into profit. So our first target that had the high low trail stop already moved up to the previous candle. My super trend trail stop, however, because the super trend is still under the price, hasn't started trailing. We'll see, hopefully it heads up that way. So again, I'm going to hit play. And our high low trail stop got stopped out right away with a little wick. We can adjust that later. We'll go over how to configure all of your trail stops. I just want everybody to understand how they work first before we start messing with the settings. So again, I'm going to hit play. So now we can see that as the super trend went above our stop, our stop is now trailing that super trend. So as the price increases, the super trend increases. Now we have that runner. And it goes until it gets stopped out or if you have a profit target, if it hits that profit target. Now for the third thing we should note is we can manually activate these trail stops whenever we're in a trade. If we want to start the trail stop early or maybe just deactivate it if you no longer want to trail, all we need to do is make sure you set it up within the properties. As long as you have a trail stop defined in your order management, this could be any sort of trail stop. It will make these buttons appear 
as soon as you enter into a trade. If you only want to activate your trail stop manually, you don't want it to be automatic. You can just set your trigger distance to a number that's really far away. That way it will never reach that threshold and you can activate it manually at any time. So as long as we have those options, you will see your trail one and trail two. And these are tied to the target that you defined. So I'm going to hit play. And let's say I want to start trailing my high low right now. That is the first target. I can just hit that button and it goes to where it should be. And if I want to start trailing my super trend, again, I can just hit that button and it goes right to where it should be. I'm just going to speed this up. If at any point I want to stop trailing, you can just click it so it turns white and it's just going to stay exactly where it was. If I want to start trailing, just hit it again and it'll start up again. So that is completely up to you and how you want to manage your trail stops. Now let's actually go back into the settings and see how we can configure all of these different trail stops. All right, we're back in the properties. We're going to go over the trail stop functions. So first up is your high low. How this one works is if you are in a long trade, it's going to trail the previous candles low. If you are in a short trade, it's going to trail the previous candles high. Now the offset is just how far away we're setting our stop from either that low or from that high. An offset of zero means if we're going long, it's right at the low. If we're going short, it's right at the high. An offset of let's say five, this is going to be five ticks it's going to set it five ticks below the low of the previous candles. If you're going long, it's going to set it five ticks above the previous candle if you're going short. If you do a value of, let's say, negative five, it's just going to bring it into the candle. So if you're going long, it's going to be five ticks above the low. If you're going short, it's going to be five ticks below the high, so into the candle. So if you want away from the candle, just do a positive offset, it's going to adjust whether you're long or short. Now, the period is how many candles back you're trailing. So for example, let's say this is our current candle, a period of one is going to trail this candle. If we were to change this to a period of two, it will set our stop at this candle. One, two candles back. Period of five, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. So this candle. And if you have that offset of five as well, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five and then five tick offset from this candle. And it's the exact same thing if you're going short. Let's say we were on this candle, this is our most current, one, two, three, four, five. It would just trail this fifth candle. So I'm just going to leave that at five, change this to two, and for all of my examples, I'm just going to do one tick distance so it starts trailing right away. That way we can get through these examples a lot quicker. So all of my trail stops will have this same trigger distance. We're just going to show how to configure the trail stop. So as we can see, anytime we create a new candle, we are trailing by a period of two, so one, two. And because we have an offset of five, we are five ticks below that low of the second candle. So you can adjust these whatever you want. It would be the same thing going short. But let's move on to our next trail stop. So next up is the ATR trail stop. This one is a very popular trail stop method and one of my favorite ones as well. So how the ATR works is it just takes the ATR indicator, it takes that value, it multiplies it by your multiplier. So if we were to do a value of one, it's going to be the exact value of the current ATR. 1.5, 1.5 times the ATR. So with a value of two, that just means two times the ATR, that's where it's going to set our stop underneath our price. If we're going short, two times the ATR, obviously above the price. Now, as you may have noticed, when we select any ATR method, you can go up here to your indicators and you can also select the period 
for the ATR. So if you want to adjust that as well, you have the ability to do so. Now from here, you can also set an offset from whatever that ATR price is. I think for the most part, because you're using that multiplier, it's not really going to be that useful, but you can offset it if you want to, it's there as an option. Now, the only other added feature with this one is the update intra bar. So what this does is it's going to update your trail stop in real time. If we have this option unselected, it's in the off position, your bar needs to close before the trail stop moves up. If you have it selected, that means as the price continues to move up, even if it's in real time, your stop is also going to move with it. This one is going to be a little more CPU intensive, but it will provide a real time trail stop especially if you're using minute candles where the price hasn't closed yet, this will let your trail stop move up in that real time. So I'm just going to select that and I'm going to hit apply and let's run through an example. So we'll just hit enable again, just enter manually and hit play. So as you can see, as the price starts moving up, we start trailing using that ATR. Now, I'm just going to load the indicator itself so we can get a visual of the number. So the current ATR, we're at 1717. So let me pull this up, 1717 times two, that was our multiplier, 3434. So just keep in mind, it would be from that highest price. So. 19.85150, minus 34.34. So we have it set at 19.817. It would adjust because this is also updating in real time. So your ATR might be a little bit different, but we are fairly close within those couple ticks. I think where I paused it was a little bit different, but that's just how it works. It just takes your ATR, it multiplies it, and it sets your stop based on that number. So let's move on to our next trail stop. All right, back in the properties, let's now go over our parabolic SAR. This one, for those that are not familiar with the parabolic SAR, it is a trend direction indicator. It just helps determine the direction of the trend and it helps identify stop and reversal points as well. Now, this trail stop is just going to trail the same as this indicator. We can customize this indicator exactly how we want. It's the same settings as the indicator itself. These are the default settings, so I'm just going to leave it like that. The period, again, you can trail the most current parabolic star the more numbers you add the farther back it trails so a period of two just trails the parabolic star from two candles ago a parabolic star period of one just the previous value from that previous candle now if you want to show the parabolic star you can just click on that that way you get a little bit of a visual as well. And again, you can offset from that indicator as well. So if you want just a few ticks below, if you're going long, few ticks above, if you're going short, you can do that as well. I'm just going to hit apply and we'll show an example of that. So let's just enable this on the chart. And these yellow dots, that is your parabolic SAR. So again, I'm just going to enter long, hit play. And once the parabolic SAR goes above the stop, that is when it starts trailing. So as you can see, we had a period of one, so it's just trailing one candle back. So that's all the parabolic SAR trail does. Let's go on to our next trail stop. All right, next up is the tick trail method. This one causes, I think, probably the most confusion, but I'm going to try and explain it so it makes a lot more sense. So the way the tick trail stop works is fairly simple. We're just trying to define the frequency. That is how often our stop is going to move up. It's not the distance is going to move up. It's just how often that step happens. So a value of five, that means it's not going to move our stop until it hits a new five tick target. So once it hits five ticks, our stop moves up. Hits another five ticks, stop moves up again. Another five ticks, stop moves up one more time. And it just keeps doing that until it gets stopped out. Our stop distance is how far away we want our stop to be from 
our frequency. So a value of five for that stop distance means that anytime that frequency is hit, so anytime a new threshold is hit, your stop is going to move five ticks below that stop if you're going long. So new frequency, stop distance, five ticks away. New frequency, stop distance, five ticks away. And this is only going to start after it hits your initial trail trigger. So after it hits this part, in this case, one tick distance, so basically right away, it's going to, again, activate your trail stop. So let's configure this. I'm going to change this to a frequency of one. This means every time it hits a new one tick profit, it's going to move our stop. And my stop, I wanted, I'm using 64, 16 candles, so maybe let's do 70 ticks away. That should be a good distance. So again, anytime a new one tick profit is hit, that is my frequency, it's going to set my stop 70 ticks away and it's just going to trail it up like that. Now, the update intra bar, if this is unselected, just like our ATR trail stop, unselected means it's only going to update once the bar closes. This is going to be less CPU intensive, and if you don't need to trail in real time, you can just have that off, it's not a big deal. But if you do want to trail in real time, make sure we select the update intra bar checkbox, and now any new tick, it's going to move our stop 70 ticks away from that. So again, I'm just going to show an example. So I'm going to enter long and play it. You can see we already hit one tick into profit. Our trail is 70 ticks away from that highest price. So as we hit play, it's just going to keep moving our stop up in real time as we keep making new highs. So there we got stopped out on a pullback. It happens, but we can adjust these trail stops exactly how we want them. And just as a reference for those that like to use the Ninja Traders ATM trail stops, this one will be the closest to that method. So for example, the stop loss portion would be the stop distance. This is the same as this first box. Your profit trigger box in the ATM, that is when it initially starts trailing. That would be what we select down here. And the step frequency, that is your trail frequency, that is how often it trails again. So again, these serve as pretty much the exact same functions. So I hope that makes sense, but we're moving on to our last trail stop. As of this video, we'll likely add even more as more requests come in. But last but not least for now is the super trend method. Now, super trend, much like the parabolic SAR, is just going to trail that indicator. And I'm just going to show it on the chart just so we can get a little bit of a visual. All right, I have it enabled here just so we can see it, but I hope we can still read the options. When we are in a long trade and with the super trend trail enabled, we are going to trail each green super trend underneath the price. If we are in a short trade, obviously we're going to trail the upper red super trend down. The trail stop offset is just how many ticks away from the super trend you want to trail. An offset of zero, we're trailing right at that super trend. If we were to change this to an offset of five, it's just five ticks below the super trend if we're going long, five ticks above if we're going short. The trail period, again, just like the other ones, is just how many periods back you want to trail. So a period of one is going to trail the previous candle's value. Period of, let's say three, is going to trail one, two, three candles back. And that's pretty much it for the super trend trail. Again, I'm going to show you an example just so we can get a visual. All right, I'm just going to enter long and I'm going to hit play. So here you'll notice that the super trend is well below our stop. That means for any trail stop method, our stop will never go back underneath to a worse price. Once the super trend starts creeping up above where our current stop price is, then it's going to start trailing. So let me just speed this up a little bit. So again, now that our super trend is going above where our stop would be, now it starts trailing that super trend.
So that's all there is to these trail stop methods. I hope this video was useful in helping to lock in some profits. If you guys have any more suggestions on other trail stop methods you want to see, please let me know in the comments, let me know on Discord. But I'm going to end it here. As always, take care, enjoy.